Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Pretty soon, many of you will be confronted with the pressure to participate in mass swine flu vaccinations. But before you do this, before you allow your children to be vaccinated, I would suggest that you familiarize yourself a little bit with the facts insofar as those vaccinations are concerned. I'd like to read to you from an article which was published by the Washington Post dated August 23. It says government health officials are mobilizing to launch a massive swine flu vaccination campaign this fall that is unprecedented in its scope and in the potential for complications. The campaign aims to vaccinate at least half the country's population within months. The United States has never tried to immunize so many so quickly. And then it goes on to say that this is potentially the largest mass vaccination program in human history. But not everybody agrees with the necessity of that program. The article quotes Barbara Lou Fisher of the National Vaccine Information Center, which, according to the article, opposes many vaccine policies. And she is quoted as saying, this is an overreaction. There is no national security threat here. Why are we operating like this? A poll was conducted among German doctors. And according to the outcome, as was reported in the German press, 93% of German doctors oppose the concept of having a mass vaccination campaign for swine flu. And they say the reason is the symptoms, the consequences of that disease are such mild ones that such a mass vaccination campaign is just not warranted. The article goes on to say, though, by the Washington Post, that authorities are adamant the vaccination will be voluntary. But we will see in a moment how, quote unquote, voluntary they are going to be. To address concerns of pregnant women and parents with young children, some vaccine is being produced without a mercury additive. Schools considering giving shots to children are making plans to get permission from parents. Now you can already see how voluntary that's going to be. A parent who refuses to let the child immunized or vaccinated is going to be looked upon as obviously somebody who is not taking care of his or her child, perhaps labeled as an unfit parent. The article goes on to say, the government is prepared to buy enough to vaccinate every person, 600 million doses altogether, if the pandemic or demand warrants it. That could increase the cost to $5 billion for the vaccine alone. It would cost at least $9 billion to administer the vaccine to the entire population, and that at a time when our economy is already so bad. In addition, the British paper Mail Online wrote the following on August 15. A warning that the new swine flu jab is linked to a deadly nerve disease has been sent by the government to senior neurologists in a confidential letter. It tells the neurologists that they must be alert for an increase in a brain disorder called GBS or Jean barre syndrome, which could be triggered by the vaccine. GBS attacks the lining of the nerves, causing paralysis and inability to breathe, and can be fatal. Concerns have already been raised that the new vaccine has not been sufficiently tested and that the efforts, especially on children, are unknown. Some person wrote in and said that my grandfather took that particular shot and died from it. It goes on to say there are concerns that there could be a repeat of what became known as the 1976 debacle in the United States where a swine flu vaccine killed more than the virus itself. A mass vaccination was given to the go-ahead by President Gerald Ford because scientists believed that the swine flu strain was similar to the one responsible for the 1918-1919 pandemic which killed half a million Americans and 20 million people worldwide. Within days, symptoms of GBS were reported among those who had been immunized, and 25 people died from respiratory failure after severe paralysis. One in 80,000 people came down with a condition. 
In contrast, just one person died of the swine flu. More than 40 million Americans had received the vaccine by the time the program was stopped after 10 weeks. The U.S. government paid out millions of dollars in compensation to those affected. And then the article goes on to say that the swine flu virus in the new vaccine is a slightly different strain from the 1976 virus, but the possibility of an increased incidence of GBS remains a concern. And as some have pointed out, because that is going to be a relative, a mutant of the original vaccine, and you don't know how much of a change has been accomplished. ABC News published an article dated August 27, in which it says, Health officials are stressing that it is vital for pregnant women and new parents to get the swine flu vaccine to protect themselves and their children. That doesn't sound to me like entirely voluntary. It looks more like a psychological pressure is being given or made towards parents to do it. This article goes on to say, though, that asked if there will be swine flu vaccines available without the preservative cimerosol, that mercury additive, a doctor of the National Institute for Allergy and Infectious Disease said yes, continuing that there is no evidence that this particular preservative poses any medical hazard, but because some people are concerned about it, a form of the vaccine without it will be available. Now, some of those people who are concerned about it was John Kerry. There is a video out there on the Internet you can watch in which he himself said that it is absurd to use that preservative and to vaccinate yourself or your children. He said, I wouldn't do it. And he also pointed out that there is strong evidence indicating that people who have taken it have come down with autism. Now, to my understanding, babies today are routinely immunized or vaccinated based on that vaccine, based on that particular preservative. That is still being used, and most parents don't even know anything about it. Now, when this article by the ABC News was published, some comments were written in, which I felt were quite telling, and I'd like to quote a few for you from those comments. It says, one of them, Wow! Who in their right mind would urge anyone to get any kind of drug or vaccine that has not been fully tested? They don't know the side effects, and they don't know how many people will die from it. There are far better ways to protect yourself from the flu than with this vaccine, of course. You know, simple hygiene is something we should consider. The fact that you should wash your hands frequently, that you shouldn't sneeze into the face of other people, that you should stay home when you are sick. Don't spread your sickness. Another comment said, my mom got a flu shot when she was pregnant with my brother, and he ended up with a large birthmark over 50% of his body. Just be careful. Well, my parents one time got a flu shot because there was this pressure inserted over there in Germany that everybody gets a flu shot. So they got the flu shot and they got sick with the flu, which otherwise they probably wouldn't have. In all this hype, in all this discussion about vaccinations, immunizations, how to treat diseases, one thing has been totally overlooked, apart from the fact that there are things you can do personally preventing from getting sick, or if you are sick, getting better. But the one aspect of this whole discussion, which I haven't read anything about in the mass media, is the fact that we need to have a close relationship with God. God is called our healer in the Bible, both in the Old and in the New Testament. We have prepared a booklet. It is titled, Sickness and Health. Sickness and Health, what the Bible tells you. This is a very balanced booklet, I believe. And you should absolutely read this before you make any decision as to whether or not to vaccinate yourself or your children in regards to this swine flu threat. Read this booklet because it tells you not only what you can do, but also the role God should play in our lives, making sure that we can obtain healing when we are sick. So please read this booklet online, or you can also ask us for a free copy and we'll be happy to send it to you. Thanks very much for watching. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program.